Walk our ground, wear our clothes, eat our food, learn our names. If you want to have a heart of compassion, it begins with learning to understand what other people are going through. Maybe people here in this city, maybe people globally. What are they going through? If you've got a narrow mind and you don't really understand how other people in the world work, work on this. Get a book, watch a documentary or something. Understand the problems that other people are facing. That's the first step to building a heart of compassion. The second step, and this is going to get me in trouble with some people, so I'll explain it. But it's this. Relax your sense of righteousness. See, quite easily, we face uh, people that we don't like, and we come up with reasons for not liking them because those people might have done something wrong, okay? And then we get up all on our righteous high horse and we say, because that person did something wrong, it's okay for me to hate them. There are some people, don't get me wrong, there are some people that I'd like to sneak into their house on Christmas Eve and put coal in their stockings. I'd like to be able to do that. I'd like to be able to just, you know, let someone have a piece of my mind because they deserve to be punished. I, I know I'm not alone in that. But see, what happens is when we get all righteous, we objectify people into people who do right or wrong. And we are just as guilty as anyone else on the planet. Relax your sense of righteousness so that you can rediscover who people are as people. Look what it says in Psalm 103. It says, He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. Relax just a bit. Doesn't mean you can't stand up for what's right. It means don't objectify people into categories of good and bad. Instead, allow your heart of compassion to expand toward a person who might be stuck in a life that you know is wrong, but God wants to save them from too. And the last thing. The last one is don't quench what comes naturally. I believe compassion comes naturally to us. I'm going to show you one final clip from the Grinch movie. It takes about a minute. Check this out and see if you can pick up on the compassion. As the Grinch took the tree as he started to sharpen, he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was no more than two. She stared at the Grinch and said, Daddy God, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old witch was so smart and so slick, he thought of a lie and he thought it up. Why, my sweet little tot, the big Santa Claus lion, then a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fit fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou was in bed with her cup, he crumbled to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. There's a part of that scene that has always gotten to me. And it's where it says, he patted her head and he got her a cup and sent her to bed. Why the cup? I know I'm analyzing a Dr. Seuss you know, movie. I overanalyze stuff. Go with me on it. But, but why the cup? Well, I mean, possibly, OK, let's give the Grinch you know, his Grinch characteristics, and let's just simply say he's being expedient. It's the easiest thing to get this kid back into bed if I just give it a cup and then you know, shove it off. You certainly shove it. But, you know, it, it's just going to work faster if I do that. But, you know, at, at some point, there's got to be something inside this grinch that says, she probably would like a cup of water. 
And I can do that much. Here's the key. There are many times in your life and my life where we will have the opportunity to offer someone a cup. A, a sense of compassion begins to prick our hearts. And yet, if we work hard enough, we can quench it. We can push it down. We can say, no, I've got a mission to do. No, I've got a job to do. No, I've got my schedule to keep. No, I've got my own things to deal with. Let's just get rid of this person and move on. There are so many times that we can do that. But listen, there's got to be something that even in the heart of the Grinch said, do something nice for this little girl. And you know, he then just stifled the rest of what could have been going on in his heart. My daughter came home from school a couple weeks ago and was crying because her friend told her that her mom and dad are breaking up. My daughter's in kindergarten. And she had no idea that this kind of thing could happen with parents. And she was sad for her friend. See, compassion comes naturally to us. It's built into us. God has put that into our souls as, a, as kind of a safety mechanism to prevent us from getting too crazy. And all I want you to do is to take the opportunity over these next couple of weeks to allow God's compassion to begin to work into your heart. To let compassion itself, just the emotion. Compassion is easy. You don't have to actually do anything. Just feel it first. Allow yourself to feel the sense of compassion. Come back next week and we'll tell you what to do with it. But just feel the compassion for a moment. And, and let your heart expand just a bit with those feelings. I've got a passage I want to read to you. And we're going to read this as our reflection. Preparing for communion. So if you want to follow along with me, it's Psalm 108. If not, just kind of close your eyes and listen to it. It's rather long, but it tells us about the character of God. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle.